Jackie Gleason? He's one of the young talents that's coming along. Who's Jackie Gleason? Jackie's a very strong personality. He's got a great future. I think he's <laughs> tremendous. Good morning, gentlemen. Well, Jackie was in education. I did two pictures with him. He taught me an awful lot. I'm crazy about Jackie Gleason. I met him last night at a hotel, and he was an extraordinary character. I remember Jackie Gleason getting so exasperated that you'd think television set was going to explode. Why did you ever get an idea for food like that? Well, I was uh, raised watching the honeymooners. I got the idea from a radio program from the mystery chef. The mystery chef? <laughs> he cooks like that, no wonder he wants to keep his identity a secret. I don't find those kind of people at one time in too many shows. For starters, we're going to need a fighter. I never dreamed that I'd really get to meet him. Here I am working with him. Where are we going to find a grifter who can fight? He is himself a great. That's why they call him the great one, Jackie Gleason. Hi, I'm Jeremy Paul Kagan, the director of a new motion picture called The Sting 2. Some of you may remember the first Sting. It was about two con men, uh, Gondorf and Hooker, who were trying to get some money from an evil man named Lonigan. Well, the con is on again, but this time, the Gondorf is a special unique American personality, one of the comic greats of all time, Jackie Gleason. This is Jackie's 50th year in show business, a half a century of entertaining Americans in the world. He is certainly one of the great ones and one of the great performers of all time. It's been an exciting experience for all of us to work with a true comic genius, and I know you will be entertained by what he does on the screen in the film Sting 2, and more important right now, by watching him in the process of making it. So, in the inimitable words of her, and away we go. Well, this is my 50th year in show business. And as I've said many times, it started uh, in a pool room. Hi, Happy. What's that happen? I was a, a rack boy when I was nine. And I'd get there in the morning and sweep the tables. And then until someone came in, they allowed me to shoot the pool on the back table. And I got pretty good at it. <laughs> it feels pretty good. It feels just like. I'm waiting for Newman. You shoot a good stick. Thanks. Gee, you shoot straight pool, mister? Now and then, you know how it is. You're, uh, you're Minnesota. They say Minnesota fat is the best in the country out where I come from. Is that a fact? They say that old fat just shoots the eyes right off them balls. Big John, do you think this boy is a hustler? Newman played me one time for 50 bucks. When I beat him, I got so mad he paid me off in pennies. A lot of Fargo Gandalfs in my time. I think he's a better Gondorf than one could ever imagine because he also is a man who truly has gone through hustling stages of life to get to where he is. You are a hustler. You son of a bitch! Don't you ever call me a hustler. Well, Fargo is a guy who really doesn't steal, although he makes money by getting it from people who don't want to give it to him willingly. It's their greed that provides him with the opportunity to make the money. What they're doing right now is setting up a man who is really quite willing to commit a crime. The way they're setting him up is getting him very angry at him by embarrassing him and making him a fool in his own club. And he missed you. One of the special things about the whole nature of the sting is it is a game. It's an active game. You put up a fact that you think is true, and then it turns out not to be true. The confidence man's whole idea is that he knows that most people are greedy. He doesn't believe himself a criminal at all. What he's doing is convincing people to get involved in a crime that they themselves then participate in. Great. Great. Oh. All right. 
I say, oh, is that what they call it then? Now look at the tip. The name Gondorf, which is uh, actually was a common roof of men. In fact, there were at least two men who used it. They may have been brothers. One doesn't really know because these names are often pseudonyms. There was one character who was a very high style, thought of himself as kind of an aristocrat of the underworld. And that's the character that uh, Jackie Gleason plays. His Fargo is a man who wears expensive clothes, expensive jewelry, stays at expensive hotels, leads the high life and has a certain kind of uh, savoir-faire that gives him the feeling of being of the highest of class in society. Whoops. That's the first time I've miscued since I was nine years old. Wait a minute. You're taking a thousand dollars of my money. I'm going to get a chance to win it back. My pal, George Burns! Jackie is, um, is a great singer, a great dancer, never gets any laughs. He can be a funny man, he can be a comic, he can be a pantomimist, he can do mime. Here he is, that guy, Mr. Television, my pal, Milton Berg! But most of all, Jackie Gleason is a comedian, an actor that does comedy, and I appreciate that. Well, I knew that, uh... If I was going to be on television for an hour every week, that it would be an impossibility to just use my own personality. So I knew that I had to create some characters. And the poor soul, of course, was a saint who always turned the other cheek. <laughs> Necessity is the mother of... Oh, that's a good one. Reggie uh, was a good character for me because he did insane comedy. Julie Donahue was my first girlfriend. That's why I always use Mr. Donahue and Joe the bartender when I do the Joe the bartender scenes. Hi, Mr. Donahue. What you have? Same thing, coming up. On New Year's Eve, Pop Dunahy made some kind of homemade booze he called Juggy Huggins. And uh, that's the first time I ever had a drink, by the way. It was a drink of that Juggy Huggins, which prepared me for any kind of liquor for the rest of my life. That must be pretty good bourbon, huh, Mr. Dunahy? Jackie's been one of the greatest straight men that anyone can be. Well, look, George, I'm not a straight man. Look, Jackie, it's simple, and there's no pressure on you. You don't have to worry about getting laughs. You know, maybe I've been a straight man all these years and didn't know it. But you have to be a pretty great comedian to be a very good straight man, which we know there's a difference. Well, watch the difference. The old ones and the good ones, aren't they? <laughs> you should know. I watch you every week. I, uh... First time I ever saw Jackie, and here's the switch. <laughs> he was doing my act. I don't you care. just want to watch me every week so you can memorize. <laughs> <laughs> I got a line here to close the whole auditorium. <laughs> now, uh, he was doing Burl, and I don't think the world is ready for another Burl. possible to give the atmosphere the kind of place. Keep the energy in the animation, but you know, make sure it's quiet. You know, be enthusiastic but frustrated. It works real well. It's a combination. Feel okay? Yes. Had his separate relationship to the performer, Jackie Gleason, and for each there was a special uh, experience. For example, when Terry got con lady in this piece, has all kinds of uh, changes in attitude. And I am Veronique Lafleur. Veronica Sherrill. I'm Elizabeth Windsor. All right, it's Crinklaw. Crinklaw. Why would you want to change a lovely name like that? When yeah. Terry was first meeting Jackie, she was very scared. I have never encountered a woman seemingly as charming as you, attractive and beautiful. Well, that is certainly the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. 
Well, let's see. Veronica is like a French countess and a street urchin and a southern belle and a heart in the script. I think she's very smart. And I went for something very visceral and low, and that is um, that she's real angry. And when a person is real angry, they devise and develop ways to uh, make an impact on the world, not unlike myself. For Carl Malden, it was an experience in never being able to play the buffoon comedy before. I come from a town that's loaded with people like Makalinsky. It was a tough town. Uh, it was a nice town, warm, but very tough. And uh, you had to, if you wanted to cross the street in somebody else's territory, you had to fight your way across. For Carl, it's a lesson. Here's somebody who himself has spent years in show business and yet had never actually worked in a comic position before. I'll open it. First, you get the cap off. Oh, my! <laughs> what a shame. Mac Davis is playing a confidence man based loosely on a man that I heard about known as Farmer Brown, who was a southerner who used to come up north. Don't I know you? Well, me? No, I'm from Poland, immigrant. Uh, it's no possible, huh? And uh, play confidence games on gullible Easterners or Northerners who figured that if you were from the South, you had to be not as smart as they were. Excuse me, good buddy. I don't want to get lost in this big old train station. I wonder if you guys could help me find a subway to Corny Island. Uh, when I was getting in shape to do North Dallas 40, I had to put on 20 pounds. And I had to work out with the heavy weights, you know, the barbells and stuff. And, and uh, now I've got to take, had to take all that off, and get back down to kind of fighting condition, and there's a lot more to it. I tell you, you don't lift the heavy weights, but you wear yourself out. Oh, we didn't get that. Yeah, that looks... You gotta just really swing that straight at me, like you're trying to hit me, and make me duck it. Well, we started it again. Yeah, there's right. a lot of jumping rope and running, sparring in the ring, and I have to tell you that, uh, in my humble opinion, boxers have to be the most well-conditioned athletes in the world. There's nothing that they don't do. To I love that. <laughs> well, Mac and I are just going through the first round of the group. There's over 300 some punches in the whole fight, but the routine is broken down so that the cameras can make their movements and get the right punches. Both of my hands are sort of killing me. I'm having to hit on the tips of my hand instead of the regular hitting surface. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Once I'm a football player, I'm a boxer for Christ. It's fun, though. You get to be jump out of your own skin, be somebody else for a while. The Honeymooners was a mirror of uh, uh, most Brooklyn families. Try poison me! What are you talking about? I'm talking about lunch. That's what I'm talking about. What did you try to do? Make it exact. We never told any out and out jokes. It was all conversation and uh, uh, the way we acted toward each other. And certainly no profanity. <laughs> Empty contents and add can of water. Empty contents and add can of water. <laughs> And we got away with it. If you ever walked up to some writers and said, I want you to write a comedy show, that window. I'm going nuts! The writers today would probably walk away from him and think he's nuts, but that's how we did the honeymoons. Well, if uh, I can have my lunch box, oh, I'll yeah. give you yours and I'll go home. Hey, yeah, pal. Thanks. Uh, nice meeting you, Mrs. Cranston. Bye. 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 And the reason Alice loved Ralph was because, although he never really made it big, he was always trying. To really be a great performer and a great comic, you also have to have pathos. You have to have sentiment. You have to have only an impeccable timing. But behind every smile, there's also something sad, something real, and something human. Gee, sweetie, I'm sorry. I'm always beat for that guy is eating that food every day, and he thinks his wife's a great cook. You come up with good stuff every day, and I, I just come home, Pete. I'm sorry, sweetheart. I know it's stale, but I'm sorry. Sit down, Ralph. I'll fix your dinner for you.
major part of this thing is, of course, a boxing match. And our hero here has been told to go in there and take a dive. By taking a dive, he sets up our villain, or our villain who's betting on him, and the villain will be wrong. I'm ready to go. It's only it's only about the equivalent of 50 rounds, what we have to do when you film it. All the getting in shape is, is just to be able to last through it. That's all. You know, aside from acting 12 hours a day, five days a week, and every time we get a day off, we've been having to go into the gym and work and choreograph all this stuff. It's uh, it's time to get it over with now. Whether he can do that or not is really in question. Even at this very moment, it's really in question. Five cameras are here to find out whether it's in question. Six, including yours. We're ready. We are ready. It should be a good fight. The fight should last for about anywhere from seven to nine minutes on screen. So it should be a dilly. Tom, Tom. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, calm down for a second, please. We're going to get to go to work again, if you will. Just settle down. Yeah, this is the big fight. That's right. Logan. Lonigan. So I'm here protecting my money. I found out that I've been hustled a little bit. It's a hell of a puncher. How much you got on him? 400 grand. I saw him fight. I know what he can do. Yeah, so do I. And I've been double, double crossed. Not only once, but twice. Did but he... uh, I don't care. They can take all the money. I still think that's the most important thing. We think we're having to fight marvelous. This is what's so good about this. About the whole thing. Right. Don't, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. just real tentative, real concern Weighing about it. Plays better. 72 pounds from Bayonne, New Jersey, the Puerto Rican pugilist Chico Torre. is a man that will take opportunity of a lady in the situation of a man. When they took me for half a million six years ago, I never thought anybody would be that stupid to be stuck in the same way. But I guess they made you look that stupid, didn't they? And the one thing that somebody tried to do in the old days was to take him for half a million. Anybody that takes Lonergan for half a million has to put it back in order. What I do is to add the mystery. Always be the mysterious fellow. Jake, you're doing great. Keep away from him. You go the distance. Huh? Jake, you're a five, huh, Fargo? Yeah, and how are you gonna go six? Huh? We're sitting aboard the official car of the Lackawanna Railroad, built actually a late car in 1931. And this would be that final shot in the sting, too. Eight weeks we've been yeah. going this way, then backing up on the track. Eight weeks, man. I don't have any more in me. There are actors, and then there are performers. And in Jackie Gleason's case, you have uh, the divine combination. This man is a personality. Gleason. You know what I had for lunch? I don't know. Neither did I, and I had to eat it. All right, get going. Mm. Hell with that. And that's my friend Jackie Gleason. He'll surprise you every time, and give you a laugh. Talented, genius that he is, and God bless him. I hope to make another picture with him. Can I say about Jack? He's an institution. He's brilliant, and I love him very much. Jackie, on your 50th, may I wish you so much of good health. May, may you live to be as old as any young man's act. Jackie, listen, this is personal between you and me. I want, is this reading right? To the moon! Well, close.